Hi, this is the first in a series of videos uh, to show you how to make a basic website, a uh, four page website uh, that'll have a lot of bells and whistles in it, but I just want to show you how to get things into a website. You can pick or choose what you like. Um, it's going to be a responsive website, which means that the design will change to fit different size screens. So it'll change from a uh, desktop, laptop, down to a tablet, and even a phone, and still uh, uh, work. But things will move around uh, to accommodate those new sizes. Okay, so let's get into it here. In Photoshop, I've already created my basic design, um, and uh, the way I did this is I just started with a standard size screen. In this case, I think it was uh, 960 pixels across and about 1,000 down. Um, I put my navigation on top and then for each page I built um, a background and content section for those so those can be turned off and turned on. Um, this is something I could show my client and say this is what we're thinking about for um, the website and then make changes quickly in Photoshop uh, rather than try to do this stuff in, in Dreamweaver. And you could also use fireworks at it works equally as well. So um, I can say here's the gallery. When you click on these, the image will open here, and then the client will say yes, no, and make changes or whatever. Okay. So what I need to do now that I've gotten all this kind of laid out the way I want it is I need to start taking the images from here, the parts that I need from here. One thing I'm going to need is this logo with its drop shadow. I'm also going to need the backgrounds. There's four different backgrounds. Um, the other thing I'm going to need from the portfolio section are these thumbnails here, um, and or need to create thumbnails here. And then for the large artwork that will open in a, in a Java uh, script window uh, for here. The last thing I really want to get from here is kind of a four position only deal. I'm going to gray out the screen, but you'll still be able to see it so that I can take that into Dreamweaver and then start arranging my objects over the top of it because this, all of this, this is going to be created uh, in Dreamweaver. Now it's going to be responsive and it's going to move so it's just kind of a place to start really. So I'm going to start doing that stuff right now. Uh, first we'll, to grab the backgrounds, I would turn everything off, my navigation off, my content off, and then I would do this image for the background right here, um, a save for a save for web. So that was file, save for web. Remember we're going to get this dialog box that shows both um, the before and after. I can move around. Um, in this case, uh, because it's a photograph, I'm going to pick uh, JPEG and uh, just keep moving the quality up until the bottom is acceptable. It looks as close to this as it can, but that gives me a very small file size, and that's what I'm looking for. Something between um, decent enough looking and a small file size. And then I'll say save. Where I'm going to save this is in an image folder, and I've already done that, so I'm going to cancel this. Um, and I'll show you the image folder in a minute. But I would go through then and take each one of these uh, backgrounds and do the same thing. Save it for web. So here's my background, I'd say, for that one, and so on and so forth. So if I ha after I have all my background saved into my image folder, uh, which is in my sites folder, and I'll show you that in a minute, um, I want to do the, um, the logo up here. So in the logo, I'm going to turn everything off except for that logo itself. And here's the logo. And it has a little drop shadow. I'll move in here so you can see that. There's a little drop shadow on it, and I can save that uh, drop shadow and the transparency as long as I save it as a ping. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn that stuff off. Um, and then all I'm going to do is use the crop tool right here. And I want to make sure that when I use the crop tool that I'm getting all the drop shadow. I'm not cutting any of that drop shadow off. Okay, so let's make sure then I get enough area around it. Um, then I'll crop it, double click on it to select it, and then I can go right here and go save to web. Save for web. 
and get it saved. Make sure it's ping 24, transparency is selected, then say save. There's no other, um, really anything else to do with that. But when I come back here, when I go back to my site, I can use my history palette to go back to the way it looked when it was open. And that is, um, saves me a little bit of time as far as, um, you know, copying this out to another page and everything else. So I just use the crop tool and then I use the history palette to come back to where I was. Um, and now I want to do that whole um, FPO thing, okay? So I'm going to make one new layer on the top and I'm going to color it uh, gray. Oh, here's gray. So I'm going to fill with the foreground color, 100% normal. There we go. And I'm going to set the opacity down to about, I don't know, 60%. So it's kind of gray everywhere, but I can still see what's going on. And one more time, I'm going to do the save for web thing. And I'm going to save this one as just simply a JPEG. The quality doesn't really matter here because I'm not going to be uploading this to the remote server. And I'm going to just save it as a JPEG called FPO. Okay? So all of those things done. The other thing I have to do is um, my artwork. So I've actually decided that the size of my artwork is going to be this size. Um, and I have a stack of that artwork. Now you don't have to have your artwork all the same dimensions. So if it's several dimensions, the, uh, uh, the showcase will still handle all that. It's not a big deal. I just wanted it for this one to have them all the same dimensions. And then what I did is I made also smaller ones, and I can't remember exactly what size these are. Let's see. Um, they're 100 by 100 pixels. And those are my thumbnails for each of the, um, of the same um, images. And all I did basically uh, to make this happen was grab an image from this side. We'll select all, copy that, bring it over here into my smaller document, and paste it. And then instead of scaling it um, down to fit completely, I would pick an interesting uh, area of the image. If I scale it down completely, and I'm using Command T here to make it smaller, um, and holding the Shift so it will not um, change my proportions, um, I find an interesting spot on the photo and then do that rather than try to get the whole photo in that little T thumbnail. So when they click on it, they'll get a bigger image and they'll get a little you know, a bit more than what they're seeing here in the thumbnail. But this represents the image that's here, okay? So the same thing, once I get all these ready to go, I'm just going to turn on one layer and then go back to save for, um, save for web. And I'll do that for each of these layers and again for each of the thumbnail layers. Save for web, save for web, save for web. Careful to name them the same. Um, this one I'll call thumb A thumb B, thumb C, and this one I'll call um, art A, B, C, uh, so that they um, are easy to identify later. All right, let's see. Let's see what the folder looks like. Let's go get that all set up. Oop. There we go. So in my sites folder, I've already made a new folder called art2m, m for movie. And then I have all those images I just told you that I saved. So here's my art thumbnail and artwork for each one of those things. Here's my backgrounds. They're big. Um, that doesn't belong there. There's my, that's one FPO. Oh, I didn't make my FPO with the grayness. I'll have to go get the grayness um, one. But that's my FPO without the gray over it, um, which I tried the first time. And it will be better without the... Um, without that gray background over it. So let me go back here and I'll make it real quick. So back to Photoshop, back to here. I'll turn this on. We'll do a save for web. We'll make it a JPEG, say save. Going to find my sites folder, R2, and my images folder. And I'm just gonna call it FPL for position only and save it right there. And I'm going to replace the one that's in there already because it's not gray and I wanted it to be have that gray color over it. Okay, back to the desktop. So there's my FPO image, now gray, much better. 
Happy about that. The other thing I want to make sure that I have in my folder before I even go to Dreamweaver is my Myers Reset Revise because I'm going to be using that. Um, whether you use a reset or not, um, um, if you're going to use any other uh, uh, CSS files, just make sure they're in your folder before you start. And eventually we'll put these, uh, because we'll have more than just this one, we'll put them in their own folder. But we'll do that from within Dreamweaver so it can manage um, all the uh, all the links, okay? So in my workers folder, and workers is starting with an underscore, which is a common practice for things that are not going to be published. These are things that help me make this website, so if I have to come back to it and edit it, I'll have them all in one place. And you can see in my um, in my workers folder, I have my Photoshop files, all the things, the images that I um, used to make the original with, um, and my thumbnails, uh, Photoshop file, and that kind of stuff. I even have my um, text document that we'll be getting our text from. Um, so here we go. All that good stuff right in there where I can get to it. All right. So the next thing I want to do is, oh, one thing I didn't mention and I should. Uh, in my Photoshop file, I'm using, I, I'm using web, -safe, web safe text, more or less. Uh, this is Arial. All of this is set in Arial. This is not, but I'm using an image for this, so it doesn't matter. But this type right here is not Arial. In fact, this type is Alex Script, and it's a web font, but not a web safe font. So in order to use it on my computer so I could do my thump, my um, my mock-ups for the client, I went to um, I went to Google Fonts. And I found Alex Script, where I, I searched for scripts, and I liked Alex Script. So here's Alex Script right here. Alex Brush, I'm sorry, not Script. And while I have this selected, um, I can download it just by clicking it right here. Okay? So I can download Alex Script. Um, and then I also want to add it to my collection so that I can use it in my code later on. But that's how I got it to work. And it's a, a true type font, so it'll work on Macs and PCs. All right? Just wanted to mention that. Um, and we'll be implementing this in the design or in the uh, Dreamweaver file as well. Okay. Let's see. I want to make sure I don't miss anything here. Uh, okay. Now we're ready to start <coughs> uh, building our new site in Dreamweaver. So uh, look for part two.